All right, let's talk politics now. Earlier today, our own Dominic Carter sat down with Elliot Spitzer, former New York governor, of course, who was forced to resign after that prostitution scandal. Well, Mr. Spitzer's back, and he's trying to become the New York City Comptroller, and this caught a lot of people by surprise, Dominic, and he's obviously got some explaining to do. Well, that's an understatement, yeah. Richard. You know, but the good news, there's another poll out tonight, and this time Quinnipiac, it's just been released, and it's nothing but great news for Elliot Spitzer over his Democratic rival, Manhattan Borough President Scott Stringer. And he even beat Stringer among women, Richard. This as Spitzer sat down and talked with us in great detail today, a very personal and private conversation. Let me, let me start this way. Good news, perhaps bad news scenario for you. The good news, since you've entered this race, you're the front runner. Uh, I believe it's Maris. You're up nine points. Perhaps the bad news, there are some that say your re-entry into elective office is all about vanity. Right. Vanity for you. Right. Well, look. Well. Only I know the answer to that, because only I know what genuinely motivates me, and I can tell you they're wrong. This would be a kind of ridiculous way to derive enormous satisfaction if vanity were the objective. There have been a lot of incoming missiles, and I knew that would be the case, and media critiques and, and a rehashing of events that was neither fun nor pleasant and certainly doesn't speak to one's sense of vanity, what this is about is a sense of purpose and trying to serve in, in a way in an office that I think fits the skills that I think I've suggested to the public. I uh, demonstrated over the years I was Attorney General and Governor and I hope the public sees that. I've worked hard for five years to build a record that was a different type of record than that of government service, but government service is what I've always loved and I'm seeking another shot at it. Governor Spitzer, are you actually sorry about what happened? Of course. How could one not be? And it is, you know, the, the, the pain that was inflicted on uh, the people closest to me is enormous, was enormous, continues to be enormous. This getting back in was not an easy decision for me because it does lead to issues that had been, uh, you know, sort of faded a bit into the backdrop at least, being brought back up once again. And so that's not easy. The pain and agony of that, I hope, will be outweighed by the capacity to do something and contribute in a way that will be real. And that is subject to the public saying, yes, we won't give you a second chance. I won't know the answer to that until September 10. The, the first effort to get the petitions, which was a bit of a, a dash, people were at one level skeptical we could do it, and I think we demonstrated some organizational skill and also public support when we brought in 27,000 petitions. But all of that is just part of the process of getting back to saying to the public, I'd like to have a, ch a chance to serve once again in a position which I think can do more. The tabloids, you mentioned your family, that it's been tough. The tabloids have made much of this, Governor. Are, are you and your wife still together? You know, here's what I'll say, Dominic. Uh, I, we have lived through a lot. And at a certain point, I feel it's fair to me to say, look, our private lives are our private lives, and we just don't need to answer more. And we've answered all those questions, and so the answer is yes, but I, I think we've answered enough. This isn't, uh, I'm not running for pre the presidency where there is a first lady capacity. Um, you know, we, we've been through the media turmoil. If you lose this primary, Governor, will you endorse Scott Stringer for city controller? I assume so. I, I'd have to have a conversation with him first uh, to get a better sense of what he intends to do with the office. You know, I certainly uh, have always been a Democrat. I can't remember a time when I have not endorsed the Democratic nominee in a political race, and so I am hard-pressed to think that I wouldn't uh, have to have a conversation with Scott. Maybe I'd ask him to temper some of the comments he's made about me in the past couple weeks and say, ah, oh, the heat of battle, but uh, look, th those things tend to work out just fine at the end of the day. Governor, your image, and I've known you a long time uh, before you were Attorney General, yes. you're known in public as a very tough guy. Right. The last five years, was it really tough on your family? Oh, yeah. Look, look, you know, part of the image of toughness, I think, derives from the position I hold as Attorney General, where inevitably you're standing up and you're pointing the finger at somebody. It's, you know, we found you doing something wrong, which isn't a warm and fuzzy image. And I had some powerful adversaries 
you know, proud to have done so. It was Wall Street. I'm not going to go through the litany. So that bred that image. And so I, I don't think it's quite, people really know me, don't think that's quite who I am. But put that aside. But yeah, this has been tough. It, 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 it would t tame anybody, temper anybody, change anybody. Uh, absolutely. Any tears in private moments, Governor? Oh, yeah. You know, you know, I'm not, I'm not the weepy sort. I'm not John Boehner, and I don't say that to be critical of John Boehner. You know, people are built differently, and uh, they demonstrate their emotions differently. And, uh, um, you know, whatever people do and are, that's great. That's fine by me. Uh, so I'm not the teary sort. But, yeah, there have been some real tough emotions. Real tough. Are there more prostitutes involved? No. no. And Only it, one? No, look, I've answered, Dominic, I've answered all these questions many times over the years. The record on that was set forth as alleged by uh, in, in, in the various documents, and I'm not going back to rehash that, but, but that has all been out there. In the moments after the scandal broke, what did you do? I reflected. I was uh, with, my, my, with my family um, and very quickly decided, and this is looking back now five years, that, that I was going to resign because it was the only appropriate thing to do. You and decided it, immediately? Well, you know, look, I'm talking 24 hours or, you know, accountability matters. And what I had done was not proper or right. And there were some who said, you can weather the storm. I said, that would be to undercut a principle that I believe in, which is one of accountability. And uh, I'm on sanctimonious, obviously, about that. I thought it was the only, the only right thing to do. In the moments after the scandal broke, what did you say to your wife, Governor? I sat down with her family, I looked at everybody in the eye and said, here's what happened. And here's what I've done, and here's what I'm going to do. Was that the most difficult thing you've had to do in your life? Yeah, probably. Now guess what? When the New York tabloids call Spitzer the quote Richard Love Gov, well guess what? Tomorrow night, we're going to have some very interesting details. Spitzer is going to explain in his own words, Richard, why that term, why that term, the love gov, it hurts his feelings. All right. Well, we will have part two of your conversation with him tomorrow. And yes, he does cry in private, Dominic, mm -hmm. as we've learned. Um, when we come back, everybody, uh, we are going to talk about what our representatives in D.C., are doing or not doing, and Andrew's gonna tell you stuff that will blow your mind, where they will draw the line and not when it comes to your taxpayer dollars. Stay with us.